Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Routes Learning Series for Train Simulator. On today's video, I'm going to be visiting the USA and driving a full run of the North Jersey Coast route between Hoboken Terminal in New York and Bay Head in New Jersey. The scenario that I'm using for this video is actually a three-part scenario which is available on Steam Workshop called Hoboken Outbound and I'm editing all three parts together into this one video. The total distance we're going to travel on this journey is around 65 miles, and we've got a total of 18 stops along the way, uh, with the stop frequency uh, growing as we get closer to the other end of the route. So our stops along the way will be at Newark Penn, Woodbridge, South Amboy, Aberdeen Matawan, Hazlitt, Middletown, Red Bank, Little Silver, Long Branch, and at Long Branch we're then going to change over to Diesel Mode, and then continue for the remaining 16 miles from Long Branch to Bayhead, calling at Elberon, Allenhurst, Asbury Park, Bradley Beach, Belmar, Spring Lake, Manasquan, Point Pleasant, and finally Bayhead. The locomotive hauling our train today is an ALP-45DP electro-diesel dual-mode locomotive which was built by Bombardier Transportation between 2010 and 2012. A total of 35 of these locomotives were ordered by New Jersey Transit who operate these services along this route. The locomotives are around 71 and a half feet long and have a weight of just over 130 tons. The tanks have a fuel capacity of 6,056 litres, or 1,600 US gallons, and the electric systems that the locomotive is capable of running on include the 12.5 kV 25Hz AC overhead electrification system, as well as the 25 kV AC 60Hz overhead electrification system. The locomotives have a V12 turbocharged diesel engine with a maximum fuel capacity displacement of 58.6 litres. They have a maximum in-service speed in diesel mode of 100 miles per hour and in electric mode of 125 miles per hour. The maximum horsepower in electric mode is 5,900 horsepower, and in diesel mode the maximum power output is 3,600 horsepower. Now in the cab of the locomotive, the first thing I'm going to do is to turn on the signalling system with the control and the D key. So now that I've done that, the number 15 has come up on the dashboard, indicating that the current speed limit is 15 miles per hour. And this display is going to tell us how fast we need to be travelling throughout this journey. And I'll try and explain a bit more about how it relates to the signals as I'm driving towards uh, Bayhead. So now that I've done that, I'm going to turn out the cab light and turn on the instrument light. So I'll just press the L and then the I keys there. And now we're just going to have a quick look around the cab at the controls just to see what the basic controls are here. So in front of us now, we've got the horn control just to the left there. So if I press space bar, you can hear the horn going off there. And then just to the right of that in front of us, we've got the power handle, which is actually a combined power handle between the throttle and the dynamic braking on this locomotive. So when the handle is in zero, then we've got no power on. If I pull the handle towards me, you can see there there's 10 steps of power for acceleration. And if I was to push the handle away from me below zero, then we've got about the same number of steps of dynamic braking. So I can operate the dynamic braking separately on its own in this locomotive. Just to the right of that, we've got uh, the reversing handle, which is currently already set into the forward position. And now if I continue up here, you can see we've got the speedometer there with a digital display in the middle, giving us a speed readout. And then you can see there's uh, quite a few um, indicators there going around the outside of the speedometer, which relates to the current signal aspect um, that we're traveling under. And then above that, of course, you can see the speed limit display, which I'll explain about more in a few minutes' time. Now, just to the right of us here, we've got the uh, brake gauges, so you can see 
Uh, there's two gauges there. The one that I'm most interested in is the red needle um, on the gauge on the right of the two, uh, which is the brake cylinder pressure gauge. So the higher that needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied on this locomotive. Now, if I move down here, we've got two more controls. You can see there I've got the locomotive brake on the right-hand side, and then on the left-hand side with the red-topped handle is the main train brake, uh, which actually combines air braking and dynamic braking on the same controller. So this brake operates a bit like the brakes on um, British Rail first generation diesel multiple units or um, uh, steam locos, that sort of thing, where um, when you move the handle, you've actually got to set the brake pressure yourself. So we go to the release position there, and then when I want to apply the brakes, I have to move the handle all of the way up to the service position. You can see there the red needle climbing, and then I need to move it back to the hold position to stop the brakes from applying. If I was to leave the handle in the service position, then the brakes would continue to apply until they're at their maximum setting. And now if I want to reduce the brake pressure, I now have to move the handle all of the way back to the release position and then back up to the hold position once again. Though with this locomotive, it seems that once I've done the release, then the brakes will fully release before I can reapply them. One thing I will just point out at this point as well um, is that it's actually possible with this locomotive, if you overuse the air brake, to uh, bleed the pressure from the system for a moment. And as a result of that, you actually get a reduced brake force and it becomes much more difficult to stop the train so you've got to try and handle the brakes just right to ensure that you're always going to have the pressure required to be able to brake and stop in the correct place so now that we've had a look around the cab and had a talk about the controls let's just take another look outside the train and then we can depart and head out towards Bayhead Departing away from Hoboken Terminal, I've just turned on the bell there for a moment, um, which I believe is standard procedure in the USA, to turn on the bell on a train when you're departing away from a station. At this point, the speed limit is 15 miles per hour, as you can see on the cab display there, and we've got around seven and a quarter miles to go to our first stop, which is at Newark Penn Station. I just idled the power for a moment at 15 miles per hour to allow the train to coast along here. The speed limit will shortly be going up to 30 miles per hour. We just got to cross a series of points here first. These are actually double slip points. Um, for anyone who doesn't know much about railway points, you've got different types of points with different names. And so a double slip point is like a crossover, but it also allows you to turn in the other direction. So you've actually got two choices of exit from a double slip point. I can accelerate up towards the 30 mile per hour speed limit once the cab display uh, reads 30 miles per hour. I just gave us a bit of power there for a moment just because uh, we were losing speed down to 13 miles per hour. I didn't really want to get down below that. The power is in idle again just for a moment until I'm able to accelerate further. The cab display has now just changed up to 30 miles per hour so I'm now increasing the power to accelerate up towards that. Just reduce the power now as we're getting closer to 30 miles per hour. And once we reach 30, I just need to go between, I think, something like idle and notch one or two of power uh, to try and maintain the speed as close to 30 miles per hour as possible. We 
We're now entering the fairly long Bergen Tunnel. Just realised that I hadn't actually turned off the bell there since departing away from Hoboken Terminal. Um, in my experience from when I travelled to Chicago last year, I don't know if the procedures are the same with the Chicago Metro, um, the driver starts sounding the bell just before the train starts moving and then turns it off fairly quickly after departing away from the station area. So I think it's normally only on for about 10 or 20 seconds between departure and it being switched off again. Uh, one of the problems with this locomotive is that I can't actually hear the bell very well, um, especially when recording with my headset on, and uh, as a result of that, I don't always remember to switch it off when I need to. Now coming up on the exit of Bergen Tunnel, and at this point we've got around five and three quarter miles to go to Newark Penn Station. The structure that you can see coming up just ahead is the Harrison Bridge, and once we've crossed the bridge then the speed limit will be increasing, although the track speed will be 75 miles per hour, um, the signal system's not going to permit us to go above 60 miles per hour at this point. just waiting for the um, in-cab display there to change the speed limit and as soon as it does so I'm going to be accelerating up towards 60 miles per hour. So the speed limit has now changed and I can now increase the power to accelerate up towards the new speed. now reducing the power as we're approaching 60 miles per hour and coming up soon will be a speed change uh, with a drop in the speed limit down to 45 miles per hour so I do have to bear that in mind. 
as we now pass this signal with the uh, yellow and the flashing green there. I'm now indicated that I need to slow down to 45. You can see there that the cab display has changed to 45 already. And um, I believe that what this means is that I need to slow down to 45 miles per hour by the time that I reach the next signal. So that's what I'm aiming to do here. I just decided to use the dynamic brake here, though I should have applied it a bit more gently than I did. I was a bit rough on the dynamic braking just there. I just used the dynamic brake to slow us down to save having to use the air brake system for now, unless I have to. I'm now down to 45 miles per hour in time um, for the next signal there. And so now we're crossing over the point here, which I believe is what the speed limit was for. And then shortly after crossing over the point, then the speed limit is now going to be going back up to 60 miles per hour once again. So now bringing our speed back up towards 60 miles per hour. In a moment we've got a bit of a hill that we're going to climb and then straight after that we're going to be on a descent. So I'm going to allow us to lose a little bit of speed on the hill to make up for the speed which we're going to gain once we're on the descent. So we're now on a short 2.3% upward grade. So I'm allowing us to lose speed just here as we're now about to crest that and we're now going to start going on a downward grade of 1.6% which will allow us to gain speed once again. Looks like I had the dynamic brake possibly on slightly there so I've just uh, reduced that. Now our speed is now coming up once again. Once the gradient levels out along here, we've then got around two miles to go to Newark Penn Station. At this point, we've got a 45 mile per hour speed limit coming up very shortly. I'm now going to apply the brakes for that to slow down to 45 miles per hour for the next signal, which is just coming up now. So I entered the 45 then there at 46, so I was just slightly over. I was timing it just about right. The speed limit is going to be dropping further now to 30 miles per hour quite shortly. The in-cab display is going to drop down to 30 miles per hour first. And then I've got to slow down to 30 miles per hour for the next signal. So I'm just going to allow the train to coast along here at this point. So we've got the display there now reading 30, which means, as I said, the 30 mile per hour speed limit is coming into force at the next signal. If I am wrong about how the signalling system works on this route, then please do let me know in the comments, as the manuals which come with this route really aren't very clear um, on how the signalling system actually works, so I'm just trying to sort of intuit it instead. So I think I slowed down to 30, maybe slightly too early there, but now we're at 30 miles per hour. I'm going to allow the train to coast, and although I will give us a little bit of power if necessary, if I feel we're going to slow down too much, Newark Penn Station is coming up just ahead. I certainly won't need to edit, add any power at this point. So now I'm just applying some light braking to start bringing our speed down. 
I'm aiming to stop here uh, just before the end of the roof. So I'm not sure if this is the right place to stop as it's a very long platform, um, but the whole train is certainly in and here we are, arrival at Newark Penn Station. Departing away from Newark Penn Station, the starting speed limit is 35 miles per hour and we've got around 14 and a third miles to go to our next stop, which is Woodbridge. I realised that I forgot to turn on the bell as we were approaching Newark Penn Station there, something I do tend to have a habit of doing. I'm going to try and um, remember to turn it on at future stations. I did just turn it on for departure there. I'm now just switching the bell off again. So yeah, I'm going to try and remember to do that at future stops, so I do apologise if I forget to turn the bell on. Or indeed off, as I forgot a few minutes ago. I've just reduced the power temporarily, um, just to ensure that we don't break the current 35 mile per hour speed limit which has now just increased up to 70 miles per hour, so now I've gone up to full power to accelerate up towards the new speed limit. Now reducing the power as we get closer to 70 miles per hour to ensure that we don't break the speed limit here. I'm just going to have to go between idle and a low power setting to maintain this speed, although the speed limit will shortly be going up further to 110 miles per hour. Speed limit's now gone up to 110 miles per hour, and we're now coming up on Newark International Airport Station. We are currently following the route of the Northeast Corridor, which we joined just before Newark Penn Station, where we joined the line from New York Penn Station. We're actually going to be following this now for a few minutes until we reach Railway Station, at which point we will turn away from the Northeast Corridor and head out towards Long Branch and Bayhead.
We're now passing North Elizabeth Station with one mile to go to an upcoming 65 mile per hour speed limit. So I've just idled the power at this point. I'm going to apply the brakes as we pass the site of the next underbridge. We're just coming up there, so we've now just passed over that bridge. I've now got the brakes on to slow us down for the upcoming 65 limit. Not sure if uh, doing the dynamic brake handle there actually added any brake force or not. Uh, but I just wanted to ensure that I was going to slow down quick enough as I wasn't sure for a moment there. So the speed limit has now dropped to 65 miles per hour as we pass through Elizabeth Station. And there's now an upcoming 55 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm now just going to brake a bit more just to ensure that we slow down for that. So I slowed down to 55 there just in time. So now I'm just going to allow the train to coast until we're able to accelerate further. The speed limit has now gone back up to 110 miles per hour, so I'm now accelerating back up towards that. At this point we've got around 8 miles to go to our next stop. Speed limit's now gone up further to 125 miles per hour, which is the maximum speed limit on this route, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get up to that before I need to slow down for the next speed change. We're now passing the site of Linden Station with six miles to go. The cab display has now changed to read 45 miles per hour and so I'm going to be applying the brakes very soon. We're passing Stiles Yard on the left hand side there. And as we approach this next chimney just coming up, I'm then going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 45 mile per hour speed limit, which comes into force at the next signal. There was actually one and a half miles to go uh, between when the display changed and when we reached the next signal. So I break slightly too early there, um, you can just see the next signals now coming up. So I release the brakes there to ensure that I didn't slow down too much beyond 45 miles per hour. And I've just got some dynamic braking 
just to bring us down to that 45. We're now passing Railway Station. The speed limit is now going to be dropping soon further to uh, 30 miles per hour, and so now I'm just braking towards that to ensure that I have slowed down to 30 in time. At the 30 limit came into force just as we reached the point there, and it's in force as we cross this junction and now turn off the northeast corridor route. We're now about to enter a 2.5% downward grade, so now going to start needing to use the dynamic brakes to control our speed and ensure that the train doesn't uh, run away with me. grade is now leveling out as we're now passing under the northeast corridor route and continuing to turn away from it. I'm now gradually reducing the dynamic braking just to ensure that we don't slow down too much, but also that the rear of the train wasn't going to push the front of the train forward. Just added a little bit of power for a moment as I was slowing down uh, below 28 miles per hour. I'm trying to keep the speed between 28 and 30, though the speed limit will shortly be increasing to 75 miles per hour. So I can accelerate towards that as the cab display changes, and at that point we've then got two and a half miles to go to our upcoming stop. Speed limit's just gone up to 75. I'm now in full power to accelerate up towards that. We are on an up 0.8% grade at this point, which will affect our ability to accelerate. We're now coming up on Avenil Station, at this point with one and a half miles to go. I'm just going to idle the power here to allow the train to coast. And as the signal speed there has changed to 60 miles per hour, I'm just going to bring our speed down towards 60. this signal we've now got two thirds of a mile to go to our stop. A 
I've now started applying some light braking and I will increase the braking as we get closer to stopping. I can now see the platform coming up. Here at Woodbridge I am aiming to stop right at the end of the platform and at the moment we're going to stop slightly too early so I've just released the brakes for a moment something I try and avoid doing as I said because I could now lose the uh, brake pressure in the system which I have done which is actually going to make it more difficult to stop but it looks like I am still going to manage to stop just before the end of the platform here thank goodness so just as a demonstration there I couldn't actually get the brake pressure to go above 30 when I made the second brake application but thankfully I st still did manage to stop just before the end of the platform here at Woodbridge. Departing away from Woodbridge, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour, and at this point we've got around five and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is South Amboy. reducing the power approaching 60 miles per hour to ensure that we don't break the speed limit along here. We are on a slight climb here towards this signal and I see the track speed has now gone up to 75 miles per hour so I'm going to increase the speed further. I say that and now it's actually dropped back to 60 miles per hour due to the signal speed so I can't actually accelerate at this point. The gradient has now leveled out once again, shortly after passing the previous signal. And so what I'm looking out for next along here is a junction, and then shortly after that a track's going to diverge, and then at that point we've got around um, one and a quarter miles to go to an upcoming 35 mile per hour speed limit. So now you can see the track on the left there diverging away, indicating we've got around one and a quarter miles to go to the upcoming 35 mile per hour speed.
We're now coming up on Perth Amboy Station. Now, just as we approach the siding there on the left-hand side, we've now got the brakes on to bring our speed down for the upcoming 35. have now slowed down to 35 miles per hour just in time. We're now going to cross the Raritan River, I think that's how it's pronounced, and then the speed limit is going to drop further to 30 miles per hour at the end of this bridge. So we're now down to 30 miles per hour there just in time. At this point we've got around two thirds of a mile to go to South Amboy Station. just allowing the train to coast along here for a moment. South Amboy Station should be coming into view very shortly and here I'm going to aim to stop at the end of the platform and of course I'm jumping to part two of the scenario so once I've done the edit you may notice when I'm back in the cab I'm slightly further ahead or behind of the position that I'm going to stop in here as I can't guarantee stopping in exactly the same place as where the next scenario will begin. like I'm stopping slightly too early there. Unfortunately that means having to release the brakes which is something I didn't really want to do due to this reapplication here. I'll start with a low brake force and I'll increase the pressure as we get closer to zero. So I've just released the brakes momentarily and now I've reapplied them and we should hopefully to be stopping in just about the right place uh, for the start of the next scenario here at South Amboy Station. Departing away from South Amboy, the starting speed limit is actually dropped to 20 miles per hour I see in this uh, second scenario and at this point we've got around five and a half miles to go to our next stop which is Aberdeen Matawa. So 
I'm just going to coast gently here at 20 miles per hour, adding a little bit of power if our speed drops below 18. Until we're able to accelerate further, with a further increase in the speed limit up to 30 miles per hour coming up in a moment. So I'm now accelerating up towards 30 miles per hour. One thing I have noticed on this route uh, with the level crossings that I'm seeing is that there's no whistle boards at all to warn me of these crossings so I'm not sure if on the North Jersey coast route they actually uh, use the horn or not in real life when approaching a crossing or indeed if this is a quiet zone. I've got no way of actually telling so please do let me know in the comments about the uh, use of the horn uh, or the horn rules, should I say, on this route. Now here the uh, track speed limit is actually going up to 60 miles per hour but for some reason the cab display doesn't change above 30. It seems that the scenario assumes that I'm able to drive faster as um, it shows that I'm actually becoming more and more delayed and will arrive at my next stop late if I continue to drive at 30 miles per hour but in the interest of realism I don't think I really should be accelerating above it. So I'm unfortunately now going to be stuck at this speed until we reach, I think it will be the next signal and then the speed should go up. Something else I've noticed the lack of on this route is uh, speed signs. So there's actually no trackside signs to warn you of any speed changes. I'm having to rely on the cab instead, or just known landmarks to know where I need to slow down by. The track speed here now drops to 45 miles per hour, but of course, unfortunately, I still am unable to accelerate at this point due to what the cab signal display is saying. Could be simply that I'm interpreting the signals wrong of course at this point so again please do let me know in the comments if I am doing so. If all goes to plan, then the next video on my channel should be a run from London Marylebone through to Birmingham Moor Street in a Class 67, which is utilising the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 67 Enhancement Pack, and uh, that's a route that I'm yet to cover, and so I thought it would make quite an interesting video. Uh, there has been an extension to the Great Eastern Mainline released on Steam Workshop, um, which covers the rest of the run between Ipswich and Norwich, which I'm hoping to cover at some point in the future as well, a full run between London, Liverpool Street and Norwich, um, which is quite the journey. Um, unfortunately, that route's not very stable and is prone to crashing, so I'm having to be very careful with that. Um, I'm hoping to be able to record if the simulator allows me to do so.
I'm hoping that the next signal will come up soon because then at that point I should be able to accelerate away from this speed which is seeming just a little bit of a drag to be driving at when I know that the track speed is so much higher than this. just approach the signal here I can now accelerate up to 60 miles per hour so at the next signal um, the speed limit is dropping down to 45 miles per hour so we're actually just one mile away from the upcoming 45 limit so I'll accelerate for a moment but I'm not going to accelerate too much to ensure that I don't end up breaking the speed limit along here Now starting on a 0.8% downward gradient, which will cause the train to accelerate a bit more. I am allowing us to accelerate towards 60 for a moment. I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 45 at the next underbridge that we cross, which should be coming up in just a moment now. We're now approaching the bridge. I've now got the dynamic braking on to start bringing our speed down to 45 which should hopefully be in time as I braked at the start of the bridge there. Once the speed limit has dropped down to 45 miles per hour, we've then got around half a mile to go to our stop. Just reduce the braking for a moment, but I have left the brakes on just to bring our speed down a bit more. We should be coming up on the station in a moment, uh, just around this left hand curve here. I'm aiming to stop here just at the end of the platform uh, to the left of us just here. So this should hopefully be about the right place to stop. Starting away from Aberdeen Matawan, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and at this point we've got around one and a third miles to go to our next stop, which is Hazlitt. speed limit has now just gone up further to 70 miles per hour. this signal we've now got just under one mile to go to Hazlitt station 
What I'm looking out for now is a set of points coming up, at which point I'm going to idle the power and then start applying the brakes. So now as we're at the second set of points, I've now applied the brakes to start bringing our speed down. So I broke there to slow down to 20 miles per hour entering the platform and I'm aiming to stop here at the end of the platform. Do note also that the speed limit just before entering the platform here actually went up to 80 miles per hour. We're we'll very careful with the brakes here now as I unfortunately overuse them a bit. So I did break just a little bit too early for this station, though I should now be stopping hopefully in just about the right place. Starting away from Hazlitt, the starting speed limit is 80 miles per hour, and at this point we've got around four and a third miles to go to our next stop, which is Middletown. As we accelerate up towards 80 miles per hour, I'm actually going to drop the power as we get closer to 70, as there is going to be a speed drop soon down to 70 miles per hour, which will be for a short distance before the speed limit then increases once again back up to 80. So the speed limit is now 70 miles per hour. I believe it's mainly for this uh, fairly sharp right-hand curve just here that the speed limit actually drops. And then we'll shortly be going back up to 80 miles per hour, at which point we've got two and a quarter miles to go to Middletown. We're about to start on an upward gradient of 0.8% which will affect our ability to accelerate. I'm going to have to use a medium power uh, at 80 miles per hour to try and maintain the speed on the gradient along here.
at this signal just here we've now got around one and a quarter miles to go to our stop I'm going to idle the power and apply the brakes for our stop at the next overbridge coming up So now just coming up on the overbridge here, so I'm now pulling the power back to idle. I'm now going to apply the brakes up to 40 on the brake gauge, which should bring our speed down quite nicely. just reducing the braking as I can tell that uh, I'm just going to slow down a bit too quick there. And here at Middletown Station as always I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform. overusing the brakes a bit there but thankfully I do still have the brake pressure to use and so we should now be stopping in just about the right place Starting away from Middletown, the starting speed limit is 80 miles per hour, and at this point we've got around three and two thirds of a mile to go to our next stop, which is Red Bank. this signal we've now got three miles to go to our stop. As we're now doing 80 miles per hour, I'm just allowing the train to coast at this point as we're on a downward grade of 0.8%. And at this signal, we've got two miles to go to our stop and just over one mile to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. So we've just broken the speed limit just very slightly for a moment there at one mile per hour. And now I'm just going to apply the brakes at the milepost you just saw there on the right hand side for the upcoming 50 speed limit.
So I now slowed down to 50 there just in time. And I'm just going to allow the train to coast here at 50 miles per hour. We've got just over three quarters of a mile to go at this point to our next stop. And in a moment we're going to be crossing the uh, Navesink River, I believe that's how it's pronounced. We're going to start applying the brakes for our stop as we're crossing the river. slowing down slightly too early there. I thought the platform was just a little bit closer than it is. You see, just after that crossing there. Once again, here at Red Bank Station, I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform. the brakes a little bit harder than I intended there. Just reduce the braking momentarily and now I'm going to start applying the brakes again at this point just to try and ensure that we do stop in time for the end of the platform and I can come to quite a gentle and controlled stop here at Red Bank. Departing away from Red Bank, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour and at this point we've got around two and a third miles to go to our next stop, which is Little Silver. At this signal just here, we've got one and three quarter miles to go to our stop. We've now got one mile to go to our stop at this signal, and so I'm just going to allow the train to coast along here. I'm going to apply the brakes for Little Silver Station as a uh, brown building appears on the left hand side. You can now see the brown building coming up just ahead. And so now I've got the brakes on for Little Silver.
once again, I'm aiming to stop just here, right at the end of the platform. Departing away from Little Silver, the starting speed limit has dropped to 40 miles per hour. And at this point, we've got around three and a half miles to go to our next stop and the final stop on the electric section of this journey, which is Long Branch. The speed limit will very shortly be dropping to 35 miles per hour, so I'm not aiming to accelerate above that at this point. So we've now got to travel at 35 miles per hour until just after the next signal, at which point the line speed will be increasing to 80 miles per hour. Speed limit's just jumped to 80 miles per hour. I'm accelerating up towards that now. The next landmark is Monmouth Park Station, which we should be passing through shortly. At that point, we've then got around one mile to go to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit. Just to issue a correction there, it's actually the signal after Monmouth Park Station, which we're just coming up on now, which is uh, just around a mile to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit. So at this point, I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 25 very shortly, as we reach this second level crossing just coming up. Just past the first crossing there, here's the second crossing, now I'm applying the brakes for the upcoming 25. I, think I may have braked just slightly too hard and too early there. I just released the brakes momentarily now just realise that the 25 is actually coming up very quickly and so I'm having to uh, slow down awfully quick now to ensure that I'm down to that speed in time. I'll say that I actually thought it was coming into force at that signal just there but I realise now that it wasn't and so I did actually slow down slightly too early uh, because the 25 mile per hour speed limit comes into force just after the signal and not before the signal. The 
and I'm just going to allow the train to coast at 25 miles per hour. Once the speed limit dropped a moment ago, we had half a mile to go. It takes about two minutes from that point to actually get to the end of the platform here at Long Branch. Here at Long Branch, I need to stop with the loco beyond the platform to try and match it up um, with the positioning of the loco for part three of the scenario, which I will be starting here. And so we should hopefully be stopping in just about the right place. There's probably going to be a slight mismatch between this and when I load the other scenario in a moment. At which point I'm then going to switch to diesel mode to complete the final 16 miles of our journey through to Bayhead. Departing away from Long Branch, the starting speed limit is 20 miles per hour, and at this point we've got around two and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Elberon. Speed limit's now just increased to 25 miles per hour. I'm just going to continue accelerating up towards that and now reduce the power to ensure that I don't end up breaking that speed limit. Now starting to climb here on a 0.9% upward grade, which will cause us to lose a little bit of speed, so I'm just being more careful with the power settings here, trying to ensure we don't lose or gain too much speed. The speed limit should be going up soon to 50 miles per hour, and then after that up further to 60 miles per hour, which is I believe the maximum speed limit now between here and Bayhead. Speed limit's now just gone up further to 60 miles per hour. At that point we had one mile to go to our upcoming stop.
I'm now going to idle the power here at this next signal. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop approaching the overbridge just coming up. As usual, it seems that I brake slightly too early there. I could have actually applied the brakes probably just after we passed the overbridge. Entering the platform now at 20 miles per hour, which is a good speed to enter a platform at. Now gradually bring our speed down to stop right at the end of the platform. One thing you'll notice on this section of the track now, we're on the diesel section, is that actually the platforms tend to be shorter along here. So you've got to uh, be more careful to make as much use of the length of the platform as possible. Departing away from Elberon, the starting speed limit is 40 miles per hour and we've got around two miles to go to our next stop, which is Allenhurst. Now approaching 40 miles per hour, I've just got to go between idle and a low power setting to maintain this speed. We just passed milepost 26 on the right hand side there, which indicates uh, around two thirds of a mile to go to Allenhurst station. I'm now going to idle the power at this point, as we're actually going to be going downhill into the station on a grade of 0.9%, so I do need to look out for that and ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit along here. I should be applying the brakes for our stop in a moment, just as we get just a little bit closer. Just using the dynamic brakes for a moment to try and bring our speed down. I'm 
Now I'm using the air braking as the downward gradient there affected uh, this train's braking ability and made it much harder for me to bring the speed down at the correct point. I'm now having to release the brakes for a moment or else we will stop too early. I'm going to need to stop on the crossing coming up just ahead. And so hopefully I should have just enough brake pressure to bring our speed down and now stop here on the crossing. I lost brake pressure there so I couldn't go much above 20, but thankfully I was going at a low enough speed to be able to stop. Departing away from Allenhurst, the starting speed limit is still 40 miles per hour. And at this point, we've got around one and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Asbury Park. Once again, I'm just going to be going between idle and low power at 40 miles per hour to try and maintain the speed. At the next signal that we pass, we've then got around two thirds of a mile to go to our stop and one third of a mile to go to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit. So we have now reached the next signal and I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 25 limit just as we reach this next crossing here. And for now I'm just going to use dynamic braking to try and save me having to use the air brake system. And this should bring our speed down to 25 quite nicely. In fact, I slowed down just slightly too early there. I could have left the uh, braking a little bit longer before slowing us down to 25 miles per hour. The speed limit has now dropped to 25 and you can now see Asbury Park Station just coming up. As we're now coming up on the platform, just applied the brakes lightly to bring our speed down. Now I'm going to increase the braking as we get closer to the end of the platform, try and ensure that we do stop in the correct place. And this should be about the right place to stop. Departing Asbury Park, the starting speed limit is 25 miles per hour, though it will very quickly be going up to 40 miles per hour. And we've got just under one mile to go to our next stop, which is Bradley Beach. The speed limit has now jumped up to 40 miles per hour, so I'm now in full power to accelerate up towards that.
As we reach this signal, I've now idled the power to allow the train to coast. We've got just over half a mile to go now to our stop. see the platform at Bradley Beach just coming up, so I've now got the brakes on to start bringing our speed down. I'm in fact going to stop slightly too early there, so I'll just release the brakes momentarily. Now I will start reapplying the brakes once again to bring our speed down. Try and ensure that we stop in the correct place and should be just a little bit beyond the platform. In fact, I think the locomotive should be just around the area of the other side of the crossing here. Try and fit as much of the train in as possible. Starting away from Bradley Beach, the starting speed limit is 40 miles per hour and we've got around one and two thirds of a mile to go to our next stop, which is Belmar. this signal just here we've now got around one and a quarter miles to go to Belmar. At this next signal, we've now got around three quarters of a mile to go. Then coming up in a moment is going to be a girder bridge. I'm going to apply the brakes when we're on that girder bridge for our stop. Once again I seem to be stopping just a little bit too early. Just not quite used to the braking system on this locomotive and as a result I seem to end up braking far too early and then having to release the brakes and then hope for the best uh, as I come into the different platforms. 
So once again, I need to stop a bit beyond the platform. I need to stop just as the end of the level crossing is disappearing in front of the locomotive here. And so this should be about the right place to stop. Starting away from Belmar, the starting speed limit is currently 60 miles per hour, having gone up to 60 miles per hour just as we were approaching Belmar station. And at this point we've got just over two miles to go to our next stop, which is Spring Lake. signal that we just passed there, we had one and three quarter miles to go to our next stop. Not quite sure why these signal speed just dropped to 30 there, but I feel that I'd better start slowing down for the uh, next signal to ensure that I am down to 30 miles per hour in time certainly don't remember this speed drop when I was doing the practice runs on this journey. So I'm not quite sure why that's happened now. Anyway, I am slowing down to 30 miles per hour and you can see the next signal, I believe, just coming up on the right hand side here. I see the signal speed limits now jump straight back up to 60 miles per hour, so I can start accelerating back up towards that once again. We've actually got uh, just under one mile to go at this signal that we've just passed here. So we are actually now getting close to Spring Lake. I'm now going to idle the power and just allow the train to coast for a moment. If I were doing 60 miles per hour, then I would say apply the brakes at the billboard that you can just see there on the left. I'm going a little bit slower, so I'm just going to allow us to get a little bit closer to the station before applying the brakes. And now I'm going to start applying the brakes for our stop. Parting away from Spring Lake, the starting speed limit is still 60 miles per hour, and we've got just over two miles to go to our next stop, which is Manasquin.
At this signal just here, we've now got around one and a half miles to go to Manasquan Station. And as we get closer to 60 miles per hour, I'm going to go between idle and low power to try and maintain this speed. This signal coming up just here, we've now got around three quarters of a mile to go, so I'm just going to allow the train to coast at this point, and I'm going to apply the brakes for Manasquan as we approach a signal on the left hand side, just coming up here, so as we pass the rear of this signal, I'm now going to apply the brakes for our stop. the brakes a bit harder than I intended then. I'm just going to have to release them for a moment. The platform here is coming up just the other side of the crossing just ahead. It doesn't actually look much like a platform at all. see it there just on the ground this sort of uh, grey area it looks like very much like a dirt platform I'm assuming that that's what this station is like in real life and so I'm aiming to stop at the end of this sort of well dirt patch really and so this should be about the right place to stop Starting away from Manasquan, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour. At this point we've got around 2 miles to go to our next stop, which is Point Pleasant. Seems that for some reason here the signal speed limit has dropped to 30 miles per hour. So I'm not going to be able to exceed that at this point. Again, I'm not quite sure why that is, as that didn't happen uh, in my test run on this route. I also noticed that the previous signal was a solid yellow, um, which I'm not sure if that means there might be a red signal coming up. I'm going to have to check on that. Um, I'm still not very good, as I say, with the signals on this route. I didn't find the manual all that helpful in explaining it. And it probably could be helpful if I could learn it to maybe make a signalling guide to help other people understand the signalling, at least on the North Jersey coast and Northeast Corridor routes. I know I have talked about making a US signalling guide in the past, um, but it's just a very complicated project to do because there are different rules and different signalling systems depending on the company. And as a result of that, that's why I haven't so far made a US signaling guide, um, but there's a chance that I will make one in the future, at least for certain routes, if not for the whole country. But now just slowing down, so I'm not actually sure what colour the next signal is. And once I can see that, I will then um, hopefully be able to accelerate away in a moment. I can now see that that is not a red signal and I don't need to stop, so I'm now just bringing the speed back up. The speed limit here is actually dropping to 30 miles per hour anyway for this point. Um, so the track speed as well as the signal speed is now 30 miles per hour.
we're now crossing the Manasquan River with around one mile to go to our next stop. speed limits now increase to 40 miles per hour so I'm just accelerating up towards that now. What I'm looking out for along here is going to be the next signal at which point I then need to be thinking about braking for Point Pleasant Station. So now bringing our speed down very gently, I did just break the speed limit just for a moment there. Um, so I just accidentally went up to 41 miles per hour and then cut the power back. We're now approaching Point Pleasant Station and of course I need to stop right at the end of the platform trying to maximise as much of the platform as possible. realised I hadn't turned on the bell there, so I just turned it on at the very end. So hopefully this should be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Point Pleasant, the starting speed limit is 40 miles per hour, and we've got around one mile to go to our next and final stop, which is Bayhead. speed limit is dropping to 30 miles per hour at the next signal so I'm not going to accelerate above that here. The 30 mile per hour speed limit is not marked on the HUD. At this point we've now got just over half a mile to go to an upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit. just allowing the train to coast along this section. I'm actually looking out for some white fences coming up on the left which indicate roughly where I need to brake for the upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit. With the 10 mile per hour speed limit coming into force at a point just after a level crossing which will be coming up shortly. You can now see the white fences just coming up that I mentioned at a perpendicular angle to ourselves. I can now see the level crossing coming up just ahead, which is just before the 10 mile per hour speed limit. And so the speed limit's now 10 miles per hour. I'm going to allow the train to coast until we drop to something like 8 miles per hour. And then I'll just give us a little bit of power to bring our speed back up. 
Uh, after I've stopped at Bayhead, I actually need to pull ahead for around a third of a mile into the yard here, with a maximum speed limit in the yard of 5 miles per hour. That's going to be a very slow approach to the yard. And it says here, operating instructions, when making your stop at Bayhead, position your second and third coaches on the platform. And so um, I've actually written down in the notes here, trying to ensure that I stop in the right place, that basically I need to stop at the rear of the signal that you can see coming up just ahead. And if I stop there, then we should be stopped with the second and third coaches in the platform at this station. So this should be about the right place to stop, as I say, and then after this, I'm just going to drive the short distance to the depot. We're departing away from Bayhead, I'm now pulling up to Bayhead Yard with around one third of a mile to go to our stopping point, and a five mile per hour speed limit coming into force immediately after this next point just here. So I'm just going to allow the train to coast along at 5 miles per hour, which is of course around walking speed. Um, in fact, you could certainly run faster than this train for this section of the journey, which is unfortunately now going to take at this speed around probably uh, 2 to 3 minutes before I can get to the correct stopping point. If our speed drops to anything below 5 miles per hour, I will immediately add a small amount of power to bring our speed back up. Because if you think of it, when you're travelling at 5 miles per hour, if you're only doing one below the limit, then actually you're doing 20% less speed, and so it will take you 20% longer to get to your destination if you're traveling at four miles per hour than it would if you're traveling at five, which is a huge difference uh, to say if you were traveling at 100 miles per hour, or should I say the speed limit's 100 miles per hour, and you were traveling at 99, that 1% difference really wouldn't be noticeable. But at these low speeds, um, even a very small fraction can actually make quite the difference in how long it takes to travel somewhere. I'd just like to reiterate at this point that uh, the next few videos I'm hoping to do include Bristol to Westbury in a Class 150 Regional Railways livery, and also in addition to that a journey between London, Marylebone and Birmingham Moor Street in a Class 67. Beyond that, I'm looking at some other videos I'd like to cover soon, such as the West Highland Line extension between Malig and Fort William in a Class 37. I think that that could be uh, quite a popular video, and it's a route that's been out for quite some time now that I still haven't covered, so I think it's quite important I cover that route at some point soon. I'm also looking at long distance intercity in an HST again, in the form of a journey on the Great Western Main Line, hopefully between London Paddington and Western Supermare. And of course, I am still hoping to do a video on the Great Eastern Main Line between London, Liverpool Street and Norwich. And there's quite a few other videos I'm hoping to sort of fit in around these releases, especially in the run-up to Christmas, where I'm hoping to get quite a number of releases done, um, as I should have a bit of extra time. We're now coming up on the end of the siding here, you can see the signal just ahead, which is the stopping point. Uh, once I stop here, the scenario is going to end very quickly, so it's at this point I just really wanted to say thanks for watching this video, and I do hope that you did enjoy it. Um, for the latest channel updates, then please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook, with the link to my Facebook page in the description of this video. 
and also if you'd like to sponsor the work that I do on Patreon then please visit my Patreon page for more information with the link to that also in the description of this video. So now I'm just going to bring us to a controlled stop here and say once again thank you for watching.